Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, this is the first video of the year. We are going to be taking a look at Unit 1 Graphing and Mathematical Models. Um, just a real quick um, thing to know about these videos. Um, you will always see the targets that is going to be listed on left uh, left hand side of the screen. Um, you can see the targets, you guys can read them. Um, feel free to write those things down just so you know what the main ideas of these notes are going to be. The way I'm going to split up these videos, you will see the first video be basically the information. It's just going to be the main ideas. It's going to be the vocabulary definitions, um, all of that good stuff. And then the second video is going to be the example. If you feel like you can move and you understand it without the example, great, go ahead. I'm not forcing you to watch the second video. Um, but if you just want to see it happen, and there's always a couple like tricks and tips that I like to throw out there, the second video, it will be a little bit longer, um, but it will outline a lot of those good ideas and good habits to kind of fall into, things that we will talk about in class as well. So this is the informational portion, so let's get right to it. Um, four targets here, just understanding what a dependent and independent variable is in a experiment. Um, correctly label and plot a graph. And also with data tables as well, there is a standard that we will follow. I can create a mathematical model, understand its importance, and I can determine the meaning of slope and y-intercept. You'll notice a lot of math terms here. Um, it's a lot of just graphing, but we're going to put a science spin to it. Um, so, going on over here, notes, vocabulary, main ideas. Greatest thing about these videos, guys, is um, pause it if you are kind of behind and just write down the main ideas and then listen. So, independent variable, um, what the experimenter controls. This means you have complete control over it. If you want a certain number, let's say, um, you should be able to call it out and just do it. That is, you are controlling it 100%. You do not have to wait for any other variable to tell you how this is going to work. A dependent variable, of course, is what is affected due to the IV. IV is just a shortcut of saying independent variable. So that is, yes, what is going to be affected based upon my original choice, independent variable. Standards for graphing. ACT really likes this as well. Um, this is just kind of standard uh, all around. Independent variable will always be on left-hand column. Um, you will note that it's the variable name and then in parentheses the unit. If you lose those units, it's going to be very detrimental. Um, and then, of course, on the right-hand column, we see dependent variable and the units that those are measured in. Um, moving on over to the graph, you can see the graph is very similar to that. Dependent variable is going to be on where you would normally call the y-axis. Independent variable is going to be on the x. Y and x actually has no meaning for us whatsoever in this um, or at least for now. So do not call it y variable and x variable. It is dependent variable, independent variable. Um, mathematical model, we will follow the format y equals mx plus b. This is only for a straight line. So if I have this graph, this mathematical model would fit it. Um, and again, y and x don't really have any meaning for us, so the way that we actually want to think about it is it is dependent variable equals the slope times the independent variable plus the y-intercept. Um, it is always based upon what we are seeing in that graph, though, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, things to note um, with this is m is, of course, the slope, which is change in y over change in x, which can be rewritten, remember, Delta Y or delta anything is always your final minus your initial. So in this case, you'll see delta Y is going to be, well, you can call YF minus Y initial. Um, delta, that's all what that little triangle in front of a um, letter means. It's just a change. So that's why you see Y2 min minus Y1 and X2 minus X1. Um, so that is our mathematical model. Um, note that any number, you're going to have two numbers in this. You're going to have a number with the M and you're going to have a number with the B. Any number should have units associated with it. So make sure you put some units. Um, and then last but not least is the meaning of the slope and meaning of the y-intercept. Uh, this gets kind of tricky without actually knowing the experiment. This might be where you want to go into the video and just kind of make sure that you understand this. Uh, meaning of the slope, you are basically looking at the y-units 
per X units. Um, so the way I always think about it, I, I always look at the slope number and I kind of read it out loud to myself. It'll be like, for example, we're going to have 2.4 interceptions per game. What does that mean to us? Well, it's probably telling us that if you play or if you play one game, you're going to throw this many interceptions or miles per hour. You're going to see, oh, that's how many miles I can go in one hour. But you always need to, whenever you get that idea, the X or Y units per X units, you need to relate it in terms of the experiment by saying something like, well, if I drive one hour, I will go 90 miles. Makes a lot more sense that way. Or I will travel 90 miles or w whatever the experiment might, might be about. And last but not least, meaning of the y-intercept. I always like to say, well, the definition of y-intercept in math is when x is 0, y is this. So that means you are going to be looking at it by saying, oh, wait a minute. When, I've, when I'm at 0 hours, I'm at this many miles, maybe. Again, you might want to look at the example problem to wrap your head around this. Um, so again, this concludes our note portion of this video. Remember, these are just the notes, the example portion. You can check out the next video. It will outline a lot of these things and how to use them.